I'm back to continue my valve adjustment video. Um, if you guys have been following me, my previous video was um, um, was to actually uh, um, I stated to swap out these shims uh, with my uh, motorcycle shop. Um, however, I ran into a snag. Uh, they didn't have the quantity that I was looking for. Um, so what I did was I had to order a uh, shim kit um, right here. Uh, so this shim kit includes, um, well from here it's 1.2 to 2.4 uh, millimeters and they give you three of each. Uh, which is just sufficient enough for me to use because I do have to use um, three of each actually. So. And carrying on, um, I've written the uh, the shims that I need for each valve. So I'll show you a co close up of the uh, shim here. It says 1.65 on it, and compared to the uh, original, it just uh, has a number on it. Okay, so start off with uh, taking the bucket out, and then uh, I hold this very carefully. Uh, you don't want to drop it into your engine because uh, uh, if it gets stuck in somewhere you can't reach, it could cause uh, some problems. So, so like my uh, previous examples, I'll just do it on the uh, the first valve. So this is the shim right there, and it just goes right on top there. There's actually a space for it. Not sure if you can see it, but. Uh, Right there, there's a space for where the uh, where the shim can uh, just sit right in. And right there, and then uh, just replace it with the bucket. Okay, so the first one is done, and I'll be doing the same for the rest of them, so uh, stay tuned. Um, just a little side note here, um, this is a preference, um, personal preference. Um, I like to put the uh, shims with the numbers facing up, so the numbers um, facing up into the bucket. Um, and as you can see, the uh, the numbers are sort of worn out, and this is because it was facing uh, facing down the other way. Um, and I found out that most of my shims that were facing um, up inside the bucket um, didn't have their numbers worn out. So I guess um, I prefer it that way. So uh, now all my uh, shims are in. All the correct shims that I've calculated are inside the bike now. Uh, the next step is to reinstall the camshafts. And the uh, intake and exhaust is usually marked on the camshaft itself. That's the exhaust. That's your intake. Um, in case that your bike doesn't have any of these marked, um, it is a good idea before um, disassembly um, is to just mark it yourself with a, uh, with a grease marker or something like that. Uh, you just want to make sure that your timing is still set, um, that your uh, cylinders 1 and 4 is still um, at top dead center. So I'm going to double check here, and in my case it still is, the crankshaft position is correct. And I can still reuse my timing marks as you can see right there, also have them on my uh, camshaft. And that should be about it. Um, took me about 
Uh, seven minutes to do. Um, just double and triple check your timing marks. Um, first of all, the chain location is correct where I've marked them. They're exactly where they were before. And then um, you want to check your uh, the timing marks on the cam uh, cam gear itself. And there should be two of them right there. I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up, but um, you can visualize it. They should be parallel to the engine block. And if they are, you're pretty much good to go on to the next step. And this step is pretty straightforward. Um, just put these back on where they were before. Uh, watch out for these uh, these little pin guides, um, they do fall out. Make sure that um, um, make sure that you capture them first, or you install them onto the block first. Um, otherwise, they'll fall out. Uh, these do have a left and right. Um, usually, it is marked. This would be my left, as you can see the L. Uh, this one, same thing, but with an R on it. Uh, make sure all your O-rings are in the correct place. Idea to clean off your o-rings and the uh, surfaces before putting it back on um, so uh, before putting the caps back on um, it's always it's a good idea to put some uh, put some oil or assembly grease on the uh, on the lobes and on the cam where it uh, rubs against the uh, the engine block just so then um, that's to prevent a dry startup And a little bit is all you need. You don't need to drench the whole thing in uh, in oil. Uh, so with the caps all uh, loosely installed, um, the uh, the next step is to um, put the uh, screws back in or the bolts back in. So the bolts are all on hand tight. Um, now I'll just be uh, tightening them down um, with a ratchet, just very lightly. So then just to um, seat the seat the caps and then you just want to do this as evenly as possible so you just start with one bolt and just go around and then after that the next step would be uh, to torque them down to the manufacturer specifications now with all the uh, cap bolts all um, finger tight we can go ahead and now um, torque it down with the torque wrench and um, as per the uh, service manual there is a specific order, so you might want to uh, follow whatever's shown in your service manual. Um, in my case of torquing, um, as you can see, there is a first initial torque of 50 inch pounds, and then after that's all tightened down, there is a uh, final torque of 106 inch pounds. Now, with the torquing complete, um, it's always a good idea to double and triple check your torques uh, because uh, you don't want any of these bolts coming loose. That would be pretty disastrous. So I've double checked mine and um, we're ready to move on to the next step.